Hey everyone, my name is Shona Scott and today I'm going to be doing a Valentine's Day makeup tutorial. I've already prepped my skin with the HD Effect Primer by Crown and I've applied that down the T section of my face. Next I'm taking the liquid highlighter, this one is in like a rose gold colour, it's absolutely beautiful and I'm applying it before I apply my foundation. The reason for this is because it is such an intense highlighter that I want it to be a little bit more subtle and I want that glow to look like it's coming from within so we've got that natural dewy appearance. So using my finger I'm blending this into all the high planes of the face, so the tops of the cheekbones, a little bit on the tip of the nose, a small amount on top of the cupid's bow and above the brow bone and just underneath the arch of the eyebrow. You can totally wear this over your foundation if you really want that nice strobing effect, but for me I want that natural glow. In keeping with that nice dewy glowy appearance to our skin I'm going to use the illuminating foundation. To blend this onto the skin I'm using this tapered duo fibre brush. This is going to give me a sheerer coverage. If you want more of a medium coverage, you can use a flat foundation brush or a buffing brush. The one I'm using has less bristles, so it picks up less of the product. This foundation is buildable, so I will layer this twice just to get a nice amount of coverage, but nothing too full on. If you suffer with dry skin or blemishes, then you might find this brush is a better application brush for you because it doesn't drag up the dry skin like a buffing brush might. To set that in place I'm going to go into my pressed foundation palette and I'm going to mix the two lightest shades together. Using my jumbo powder brush I'm going to swipe that over the entire face making sure I particularly set down my T section. Now as I mentioned I am oily skinned and usually the thought of a luminescent foundation puts you off but if you set it in place with either a pressed foundation powder or a translucent powder it will stay in place for a lot longer. Now I want to add a little bit more dimension back into my face, so I'm going to use this shade from my 10 colour contour palette and using my pro contour brush I'm going to put that down the hollows of my cheeks and if you suck your cheeks in you can see where this area is. This brush is perfect for carving out your cheekbones. To soften that line I'm using my pro chisel blush brush. The reason I've chosen this brush is because the bristles are more dense so they're not going to blend this colour out too far. We want to keep the contour in the place that we've put it but we just want to soften it. I'm also going to take that same colour on my Pro Blending Fluff Brush and I'm going to apply that down the sides of my nose. This is ideal if you've got a slightly crooked nose or you want to make your nose look slightly slimmer but it's also essential just to bring back some dimension to the face. After applying any foundation your face can look a little bit flat on one tone. For eyeshadow I'm going to be using the Underexposed palette and I'm using the colour number 7. I'm going back in with my Pro Blending Fluff Brush and I'm applying this to the mobile eyelid, so from the lash line up to where your eye naturally creases. As this eyeshadow is slightly shimmery, I'm working my brush backwards and forwards to really work that colour onto the skin, and you want to layer this colour twice on both eyelids. Using that same brush and the same eyeshadow, we're going to run that underneath the lower lash line, and on the outer edge, you want to make sure that, that lower lash line connects with the top lid. Going back into the underexposed palette, we're going to take the eyeshadow number 6 and apply that to the centre of the mobile eyelid. Because it's a slightly lighter shade and it's more reflective, we're going to create a subtle halo effect, making the eyelid look bigger and rounder. To contour the socket, we're going to mix shade 3 and 5 together. These are both matte brown finishes. And with a light hand, I'm using my Pro Blending Crease Brush to work that in circular motions through the socket of the eye. The socket is where your eye naturally creases, so we're taking that just above where we put the shimmery eyeshadow. Go light handed to begin with, apply a small amount, blend that out and then reapply. We are keeping this quite soft so we don't want to go too heavy. Going in with a clean blending brush, I'm working that over the seams of the eyeshadow so that it blends out to nothing. The next shade I'm using is number 11. This colour is a shimmery charcoal black and on the very tip of my blending brush I'm working that on the very outer corner of the mobile eyelid. Like we did with the contour on our cheeks, we don't want to blend this out too fast, we want to work the brush in circular motions directly over where we've placed the eyeshadow. The look we're going for is a soft smoke, not a heavy smoke. Then swap back to your clean blending brush and just make sure the edges are seamless. On my Sable Angle Liner brush, I'm running those two brown shades underneath the lower lash line and then going over that with the black charcoal shade and again making sure we connect with the outer lash line on the top lid. Moving on to eyeliner, I'm using this dark chocolate gel liner with my silicon angled liner brush. I like to start on the outer edge of my top lash line and pull the colour inwards, then turning the liner brush round and we're going to work that colour from the inner corner of the eye up the lash line to meet the colour we've already applied on the outer edge. 
The nice thing about these silicone brushes is that you can apply it to the waterline and the bristles don't stab you in the eye or irritate your lower lash line. So you can lay it flat along the waterline and pull that gel liner across. Switching to an angled liner brush, I'm going to create a wing on the outer corner. I just find it a little bit quicker and easier with bristles than I do with a silicone brush. This is going to help to elongate the eye and then creating a point on the inner corner is going to give us that nice soft feline appearance to our eyes. I've applied some mascara so I'm going to go in with eyelashes. These ones are by Lash Boutique and they are called Jenny. I love that these are really full at the root and then they become long and spiky. The glue that comes with it is already black so you don't have to paint out the glue line. I wait about 15 seconds for the glue to become tacky and then I place that directly on top of my lashes whilst keeping my eyes open. A little tip is to give the lash a little wiggle from left to right and that will enable the false lash to get right to your natural lash root. Going back to my pressed foundation palette, I'm taking this darker shade and I'm going to use that to add some warmth to the outside perimeter of my face. Again, it's about creating extra dimension to the face, making it look less flat and this will also give us a nice healthy glow. Don't forget to also run that down your neck and slightly onto your chest if it's on show. Going into my blush palette, I'm taking this peachy apricot shade and on my contour blush brush, I'm applying that to the apples of the cheeks, pulling the colour backwards. Moving on to lips, I'm taking this lip liner in Smoked Salmon and I'm going for a slightly pinkier shade to add a little bit of freshness to the face. It's up to you if you want to colour your entire lip in with this colour, but I'm just going to line the perimeter of my lips. Next I'm taking this lip gloss in Pink Fairy and I'm adding the smallest amount to the centre of my lips and using my ring finger to blend that in. Another colour by Crown that would work really well would be Desert Jewel. It's a bit more on the nude spectrum than the pink spectrum. And then over that, just on the very centre of the lips, I'm applying the Chubby Lip Pencil in Vegas Nights. And this will help to make the lips look a little bit fuller. And that is my romantic Valentine's Day makeup look complete. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Crown Brush YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And here is a preview of their previous tutorials if you missed them. Thank you for watching and I may see you again on my own channel very soon. Bye!